Right, and here we are with David Pleasance and Hogma from the Friend Up team, and we generally do have a little monthly catch-up to find out how things are going. So, uh, the question everyone wants to know, how is everything going, guys? It's going great. Working hard and uh, getting closer to the mark. Well, the reason we're recording this video today is because we're getting very close to beta 4 of their friend up, which uh, we'll talk more about in, uh, in detail in a moment and find out what's new. Uh, from your perspective though, David, it's been a while since we caught up. How's the last uh, month or two been for you? Uh, it's been um, absolutely wonderful. Um, I mean, I was I was knocked out when, when Hogner and, and Arne, the guys from, um, from friend up, first approached me and, and told me what uh, plans were, mm -hmm. but every single um, well, probably every two or three days, I'm finding out more and more features that are being brought into the package, and it's just unbelievable. Um, we are so far ahead of, of uh, from what we know of uh, competition in uh, in this technology, and uh, and it's really really exciting to be involved in something that is so technically advanced and um, has been so well thought out. That's probably the best way I can put it. I know you've been flying all over the world recently. How are you finding it day to day then? You, you're getting enough sleep? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I just, I've literally just had a, a week's holiday. I've been in the Grand Canary for a week mm -hmm. <clears throat> with my eldest son, having some quality um, father-son time mm -hmm. and uh, drinking copious amounts of alcohol, I have to say, <laughs> and eating far too much as well, as, as you do. That's what holidays are for, isn't it? Absolutely, yes, and uh, catching some sun rays um, and recharging the batteries. So, yeah, e e everything's really, really great from that point of view. Well, re it. recharge and ready to go again. Indeed. <laughs> well, I thought it might be quite nice because Hogner, obviously, you're the uh, lead developer on the Friender project. Maybe people hadn't seen our previous videos. Can you give us like a quick, maybe very brief summary of what Friendup is for people that might be new to the platform? So it's pretty safe to call it right now a hybrid cloud operating system. So basically what it can do, it can both live on your laptop, but it can also live in your cloud. Your cloud means wherever you want to install it, unless you want to use our offering, which will be available later this year. Um, it allows you to use the internet as a computer, so to speak, by using the internet infrastructure. And it allows you to run your computer on any device that you have. So you can run a friend, a friend unifying platform on your phone, on your tablet, and your PC, and your TV, and your Raspberry Pi, and everything you want. Uh, basically, it is um, uh, a much grander level of uh, running the same software on all devices. And this is uh, basically what our project is all about. Well, every time I log on to FriendUp and have a look at it, I mean, there's always something news popped up or the interface has been redesigned. I mean, are you doing? You must be doing a lot of work on this day to day at the moment. Then, are you kind of reacting to people's feedback and are you getting a lot from your current user base? Well, uh, actually, as you see it now, you're in the pre beta four environment where we're developing from day to day, uh, trying to craft stuff and, and debug stuff, adding new experimental features. Uh, basically, uh, right now, we're feature complete for version 1.0. And all the time that we're going to be spending from now on, we'll be polishing and making things more user friendly and making stuff, uh, you know, not crash if it still does crash. Uh, and, and then I'm talking about the server components because that's really the only thing that can crash in front. And um, so, so basically, um, uh, beta 4 is when we're feature complete uh, towards what we're going to be launching for version 1.0. So uh, the only thing you're going to see of changes now is uh, convenient changes where we polish features and, and make things look better. And obviously, there's going to come a, a user experience team uh, to tweak our user interface. Mm -hmm. uh, but feature-wise, beta 4 is uh, what we're going to be releasing uh, for developers and users. Well, David, you're probably the same as me. I mean, you must be having seen this project since the early days. I mean, even look at, like the last six months since we've started doing these videos. Are you kind of impressed at how quickly this project's come along and how polished it is already at this early stage? 
Yeah, it, it's absolutely astounding the progress that's being made, especially considering that we're such a small team. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, it has to be said that we have absolutely the best people. Um, we've built a team around us of um, outstanding um, contributors to the whole project. And um, that's not only the, the developers. Um, we've, we've now got um, uh, a team of people in Oslo um, from varying backgrounds, um, one from a telco background, um, who are all um, absolutely not, not only are they, are they on board, but um, most of the team have actually invested into the business um, because they see its potential is so, so huge mm -hmm. and they want to be part of it. Um, which is really, really encouraging. Um, but as, as I said earlier on, the thing is that every every couple of days there's something new um, I'm being introduced to, and and it really is truly mind blowing. I think the whole th what has to be said is that Holmes' vision from the very beginning was to make this a project which was as much as possible flawless in its uh, in its entirety. And the vision is that it is something which is way, way ahead of everything else and therefore stays abreast of technology advances in other other areas. And in, in, in my humble opinion, that's what we've got. Well, having a platform that lives on the cloud as well, I mean, I guess it, it means it's in constant development. You don't just put something out there and then upgrade it a year later. I mean, that must be a huge advantage having this kind of live platform that you can constantly work on day to day. Yes, uh, this is one of the great benefits of running in the cloud. And, uh, and uh, so basically, you're always going to be uh, using uh, an upgraded version. You're never going to have to think about versions anymore, really. Uh, and uh, so, so we're going into this new paradigm where they're building the most powerful uh, web infrastructure that we've ever seen before. Uh, um, every major software company is trying to become a data company. We're obviously going to get the benefits from that, but at the same time, it's always been really important to us that the user himself can choose which parts to put on the cloud. Uh, it could be very specific reasons why, and very valid reasons why an individual would not want to have certain resources in the cloud. So we allow them to, to uh, use FriendUp as a cloud hybrid, uh, allowing them to put some files locally some resources locally and then uh, basically uh, extend into the internet. So uh, I, I can say one thing that, that we're working on right now, which uh, is, is a development that one of our newest investors, Barry Kirk, uh, spurred into action. Uh, uh, we do have a Raspberry Pi strategy, uh, which we will come back to um, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but uh, but basically, um, your, the the feature development that will go through the cycle to version 1.0, it will be pretty much on the server side. Uh, obviously, uh, like I said, there will be tweaks uh, uh, with usability and so on. But mm -hmm. so uh, we will make people able to um, put our friend server on all of their devices and still hook them all together and. Up uh, into the friend cloud so so they can therefore build their own infrastructure and decide what they want to have locally and what they want to have online. What kind of usage are you seeing from this and what kind of like for example if you give a, a case study of a typical kind of user at the moment I know it's very early days but where are you seeing people expressing an interest then in using friend? Uh, the most uh, uh, immediate uh, use case is uh, for building fantastic web applications. Mm -hmm. We already built and uh, delivered a web application to a company here in Norway, uh, which is called Randstad. Uh, so we built one of their internal systems, which will get full use after the summer. Uh, and uh, the second thing is um, uh, basically moving Windows applications into the cloud. We do have in the in the we haven't exposed this in the beta before, and we will allow people to, to uh, play with it uh, in beta 4, which will basically be that you can move your Windows application into the cloud. Mm -hmm. So if you have a Windows application you built yourself, or you have, for example, Office applications you want to have access to in your cloud, you can access uh, Microsoft Windows applications 
Uh, eventually, also, we're going to uh, let people play with Apple applications, perhaps even Linux applications. And it allows you to do really interesting stuff that people aren't used to with, for example, Citrix. For example, you can paint uh, on your mobile phone with a touch screen. You can paint in MS Paint uh, through Friend. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're um, adding a whole layer of touch controls on top of the, um, of the Citrix-like uh, Citrix capability. So that allows you to take one of your um, uh, uh, one of your Windows applications and putting it, for example, on an iPad, uh, which can be very useful. And it also allows you to, to access your, your files that you're working on in, in your Windows applications uh, on your mobile phone together with applications themselves. So if you have a report or whatever you need to have access to on the go, you just flick up your mobile phone and go into Friend and then you have everything uh, available to you. So this is uh, for the cloud office. Uh, this is uh, a, an area where we have a lot of interest from clients. Well, it essentially means you can run, you know, software that's developed for one platform anywhere. I mean, that's kind of the aim of Render, isn't it, to be everywhere? But pretty cool that you can run Windows apps on your phone, for example, or Mac apps on your Windows machine. Yes, exactly. So one guy that we talked to in London uh, said, oh, so this means that the Mac applications that I uh, bought a lot of plugins for that I have at home, and the Windows applications I have on my Windows PC can be accessible to me on the same screen when I'm out of the house. That's exactly what it means. Any way you can escape Windows is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or make it better. <laughs> so tell us what's new in beta 4. Can I just interrupt Pascal, a second? Yeah. Um, uh, Hogner mentioned uh, the, this first use case, which is Randstad. Randstad are um, the number two recruitment uh, agency in the world and uh, the, the job that um, Hogner and the team have done for them is for uh, Randstad uh, um, Nordics but um, once they've been using it for a while there's every chance they're going to roll it out and it's a, they are a massive client you know their turnover is in the billions so we're not talking some little two bob company we're talking about a major player in, in, uh, in the world of commerce. Very exciting stuff though isn't it? Yeah, and it's, it's a high priority for us to make them very happy with what we can offer for them and uh, to extend our offerings so that they can uh, make use of more of the, the, the cloud features of the system. And, uh, of course, we're going to be doing uh, um, projects like this with several companies. So you can expect within a couple of months we're going to add uh, several other names to the list of people who will use uh, Friend in their uh, infrastructure and in their in their uh, cloud uh, strategy. So you get ready to launch Beta Four then? Um, tell us what's new. Well, there's a, a lot of new things actually. If you look at the the, the current uh, update list, it's actually quite extensive. So uh, uh, basically, uh, we worked on all the applications in Friend. We used in every. Uh, we worked in everything from um, uh, from uh, the the Friend chat system to um, uh, the workspace to um, the development environment to the office uh, applications. We fixed so many bugs in the system that uh, some people might have come into contact with. So I can just do something right off the bat. Uh, you can uh, uh, do file management now on the icons. So file management is nearing completion. You can do drive management. Uh, right now, uh, plain users don't have access to all the different DOS drivers. Uh, but uh, in beta 4, you'll be able to ask uh, me uh, if you have me on the contact list, or you can go on the RC and ask me to set up a shared space for you and your friends, and then you will have access to a drive that you all of you can uh, save and, and store work on uh, together. Um, we also have um, uh, um, shared um, video live sessions, meaning that you can set up a live session and then you can email a link to somebody or SMS a link to somebody and when they click that link on the phone or uh, you know wherever they are, uh, they get into the live chat session. You can also set up public links so that people can access uh, your live session in and out. <coughs> uh, 
uh, you might also um, uh, put a queue size so that people coming into your live session, uh, which is full, will show up in the queue. So you see that, oh, there are three people waiting to talk to me. <laughs> well, it's kind of like a free version of GoToMeeting then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And by the way, Dan, look, uh, what you're filming at the moment, this is our friend chat um, system in operation for the, for the, for the audience so who don't know, this is what we're, we're running right now. And I've got to say, I mean, you know, I've tried like Google Plus, Google Hangouts, so Skype I use regularly, but this is by far the most flexible um, you know, a video conferencing software I've seen. And it's just instantaneous as well. There's no drivers and stuff to set up. And Hogna's even chatting to me there as well. I can say hello. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and you can also do uh, uh, funny stuff like, yeah, for example, uh, like this. <laughs> so oh, a little, can... uh, little emojis. <laughs> Yeah, so, so basically what you can do is that you can you can drag and drop files from your uh, local drive uh, or local friend drive and uh, and uh, that makes the files you drag into the chat they become public files so then you can actually access them outside uh, a friend so you can actually share fr uh, files publicly now um, this this can be cool uh, you can also do it on IRC in the group chat you can do it on private chats one on one, so you can share files and you can uh, and share even applications. Now, you can I can also send you a link to, for example, one of my the apps I've installed, and then you can use them through a guest account. So we're opening up all these networked features where you can basically share both applications and content from inside of a friend to uh, other people who do not even have a friend account. So this is also new. I see a lot of guys on uh, YouTube who kind of do like hangout sessions with their, uh, you know, fans and patrons and that kind of thing as well. And uh, you know, this would be ideal for that kind of usage, wouldn't it? Yeah, and plus you can drop a link to your public room on your website, and if people click on that link, they will uh, dial you up into friend chat. <laughs> so uh, this will basically give you a front door on the web that you can uh, that you can uh, get in touch with new people uh, through you know customers or users or whatever you can use it for hotlines uh, so you can build up some pretty cool business around this uh, application absolutely so um, when's beta 4 out then beta 4 will be out uh, probably on Monday next week okay uh, so um, then also we should uh, have up the, um, the forums that we've been talking uh, about for a while. They have been kind of ready for a while, but we've kind of held them back until we could uh, put them in our strategy and, uh, and uh, probably uh, it would be a bad, uh, bad idea to, to drop out the link uh, before we had the support system in place. And now we have a, a nice group of people ready to support users coming into the forums. Uh, so, so that should also be available uh, on Monday or uh, the day or after, you know, between Monday and Wednesday next week. Well, I know David's been working really hard on that. I mean, I always see you in the Facebook groups, keeping people up to date. Is um, the community really getting behind you guys then? Are you, are you getting a lot of good feedback from people? Yeah, there's no question that um, um, because I think of its um, uh, Amiga origins, um, this product, uh, it's taken all the the the, the spirit uh, and the be the best things about um, the Amiga operating system at, in its heart. Um, we've got we've captured the heart of, of you know of Amiga followers around the world, and let's be honest, there's there's many many thousands of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, I think everybody's really waiting for um, the bigger four, and then when they really get their heads around what this can do and the forum is launched and they can all start talking with each other, we think we'll see an exponential growth of interest and development and, um, and so on from, from you know, a fantastic range of people. I mean, let's not forget that there are so many Amiga fans around the world. Most of them, or many of them now, um, have high profile jobs within the IT industry and all sorts of companies, all sorts of, of um, uh, positions and products and services and we're very confident that once they see how powerful this product is they're going to start finding ways to utilize uh, the friend up 
um, system within their companies and in their own personal lives. We think we're going to see a massive growth from this. Well, let's face it, they were always the most creative computer types already anyway. So if anyone's going to get the most out of your platform, it's, you know, guys that grew up using the Amiga, I think. Definitely. Actually, I I have to say that uh, a lot of people were uh, skeptical uh, in the beginning. Uh, I think people are starting to realize now that we have a solid um, um, commercial perspective. Uh, and even though we have a long-term strategy for the open source version, you know, basically my goals, I was asked um, uh, by one guy, he said, so what's your personal uh, goals, uh, Hogna? What, what do you, what do you want to achieve for yourself with this system? Mm-hmm. And, and basically, um, I said, it's, it's um, a couple of things. Number one, I want to make sure that the architectures that I've fallen in love with, with the Amiga OS, uh, get sustained forever. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Uh, the second thing is that I want to one day be able to say we managed to create a super Unix. So make a concept super Unix, and that's the label that should be put on on our type of uh, operating system. And then, of course, um, uh, we would like to be uh, the company who created the best. Uh, first operating system that was not hardware oriented. The first operating system that was hardware agnostic actually lived without hardware, so to speak. And uh, into the new age where basically hardware just becomes viewing devices uh, for for the cloud. So um, if we manage to do those uh, groundbreaking things, that last thing is actually uh, called the liquid software promise. (laughs) If we could do that, where then, then basically, um, you know, my, my mission would be fulfilled, and I think uh, I think uh, this would uh, be, be a great platform for people to base their software on uh, for the future. What about you, David? How are you finding? Uh, what were your kind of goals in this? Then have, have you got any kind of next steps or aspirations in mind? Yeah, I, I mean, I've honestly felt from the very first moment I heard about this that this is um, history in the making Mm -hmm. and um, I guess having experienced um, a very long period of working with a company i.e. Commodore that whose whose, um, uh, head management team never ever had any goal or direction and I found that extremely frustrating because I had no influence on the decisions they made and in spite of that you know, in the UK, we built a, a fantastic, strong, and, and um, profitable business. So I see this as, first of all, being a part of my history, um, which, you know, is something I'm very proud to say I'm part of. Um, but also, um, it's building something um, that that sh- uh, could, will be, there's no question it will be, substantially better than Commodore could have been, uh, had Commodore been run properly. So. From my point of view, it's fulfilling two things, being part of history in the making and having an influence on that, and also being part of what will be a very, very successful business. Um, and, and, and the business that people will talk about for a very long time. Well, if the last like, year has been anything to go by, I mean, you know, I can't wait to see what happens in the next 12 months. Yeah, in, in the le- next 12 months, uh, we're gonna uh, start picking up real users both from businesses and in the open source space. Uh, uh, I told uh, Pavel uh, the other day that he should start uh, looking through his demo scene network uh, and in the ROS network, MorphOS network, Amiga OS 4 network, if there are people who would be interested in look, uh, and looking for a job, uh, this is the right time to start talking to us. Uh, we do have a lot of cool projects that people could uh, get involved with uh, and get paid for. Um, uh, you know, pretty soon, some already now, uh, for for uh, limited amounts of time, uh, and uh, we're kind of in a slow onboarding process now as we grow as a company and we get more funding. Uh, soon uh, people might find themselves in this scenario where they can work for an Amiga-like uh, technology uh, company. 
um, with uh, an ambition to do something much bigger than has happened in this scene for a very long time. And you get to work with David Pleasance, come on. <laughs> well. I, I can tell, uh, oh, having, having spent uh, now uh, a fair amount of time with David, uh, it, that's, uh, that's a bonus for sure. Absolutely. So if people want to try out the uh, Beta 4 then, where do they head to and what are the details? They go to friendos.com um, and they sign up for the beta program. Or they can join uh, the hashtag friendup uh, chat board uh, on freenode, irc.freenode.net and get in touch with uh, me, Monsoon is uh, the nickname I'm uh, under there. Or you might uh, find uh, Bomb Tom, which is Thomas. Mm -hmm. Or you might, might find uh, Acerox, uh, which is uh, Chris. Or you might find Socken, which is Espen. Or Stefkos, which is Pavel. We're all hanging there 24-7, so to speak. <laughs> so uh, then we give you instructions if you don't uh, if you lost your password or anything like that, there, there's for, uh, forms uh, for that on the website. I know you never sleep, Hogna. <laughs> He's on the coffee every time we chat. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to say as well, it's completely free if people want to try it out as well. There's no charges for people to get on board and experiment with FriendUp. Exactly. It's, it's free. It's completely free and it will um, stay free for a long time. And... Uh, uh, there will always be an open source server people can uh, go into and uh, try out stuff. So it's not something we're going to shut down anytime soon. Excellent. Well, go and try Beta 4, guys. And uh, I really appreciate you catching up with us. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again very soon. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Dan. It's, uh, always appreciated.